Hello, and welcome to Veeam Cloud Service Provider Tech Hub. My name is Artem, and I'm Inside Cloud Solution Architect in EMEA. In this video, we'll discuss initial configuration of Veeam Service Provider Console. If you are not confident on how to install Service Provider Console, please check our other how-to videos available in Tech Hub. Veeam Service Provider Console is an extremely powerful tool providing outstanding capabilities for service provider of any size. It's famous for diversified and scalable architecture. However, the core idea of this video is to cover basic part and best practices of initial configuration right after installation is completed. That said, today we'll focus specifically on Service Provider Console itself and its direct interaction with Veeam Cloud Connect servers. We'll go together through six most important steps and we'll make Service Provider Console ready for your first tenant onboarding. Let's jump directly to the UI of the solution and check what we have to do there. After constant installation is finished, you can easily access the portal using URL. It's not a best practice to connect to the server over RDP, so for further configuration, let's use jump host located in a secure zone. By default, everyone who has local administrator rights on the server are able to access the console. However, according to list privilege approach, we should use account with limited scope. In our case, console is attached to a domain. To make it secure, let's use a separate account with limited scope of rights and configure it and the roles and users tab. To do so, in the roles and users tab, we have to click New, choose the role that will assign to this specific account. We want to assign portal administrator. Choose a user and specify where we would like to look for this user. As been said, our console is connected to the domain, so we'll look into the domain. We'll check for the list of users. Choose this one, Vim Service Provider Console Admin. Apply, save, and re-log in using the right credentials. Now, let's log in using our new console administrator account. For the simplicity of usage, after successful login, we are landing directly at the built-in Getting Started Guide. Let's go step by step, not to miss anything. As we're building infrastructure to provide external services, security is one of the most important concerns. To secure connection between Vim Service Provider Server, Vim Cloud Connect Server, managed Vim Backup Servers, agents, and other components, we need to use security certificate. As we can see, by default, self-signed certificate is installed. For sure, this certificate will not work in production environment. There are different ways to get signed one, and you could choose up to you which one you prefer. In our case, we already got one installed in certificate store located in Vim Service Provider server. Let's jump briefly to the server and check what should be done here. So, we're located in Vim Service Provider console server at the moment with open console with our certificates installed in the local computer folder. Here, we can see the new certificate that's been assigned and issued by the certificate authority that trusted by the server. After this step is completed, we have to go back to Veeam Service Provider Console and install the certificate or assign the certificate to the web server and to the backend server by itself. So let's do it. Let's go to the install server, select certificate from the certificate store, choose the certificate that we need. Next, check that it's correct one and finish. It's quite normal that after this step, you'll be asked to log in once again before you'll be able to proceed. Let's do it. So let's log in back to the Service Provider Console UI using our credentials. And now let's do it again. Go to the security certificates, install web UI, choose the certificate we want to install in the server, and specify the credentials that will have rights and access to the Vim Service Provider Console server by itself to install the certificate. So in my case, I'll use the main account. Check again the summary and install it. So right now we can see that we've signed and applied the same certificate for both types, which is kind of okay in our environment, but it's recommended to apply different certificates for different type in production as well. However, you can still see that the connection to our Vim Service Provider Console web UI is still mentioned and stated as not secure. 
That makes sense. So let's close the browser and open it again to restart the connection. So now the connection is secured. We can check the certificate and see that this certificate is the one that we used to be installed on the Vim Service Provider console server by itself. Now let's look in back to our Vim Service Provider console and continue with our configuration steps. Let's go just for the second step. To all of Vim Service Provider console to communicate with Vim Cloud Connect server, you must configure a connection between those two. When you connect Vim Cloud Connect server, Vim Service Provider console will deploy its tiny management agent on the server by itself. So nothing has to be done manually on the Cloud Connect server. Keep in mind that you can add multiple Vim Cloud Connect servers located at different sites. To add Vim Cloud Connect server directly to Vim Service Provider console, you just have to simply click New in Cloud Connect Server tab. Here you have to specify first of all Vim Cloud Connect Server DNS name, site name to identify it in a simple way, connection account, which is actually the deployer account that will be used to deploy Vim Service Provider Console Management Agent directly to Vim Cloud Connect Server. So this account should have local administrator privileges on the server. And next, account that will be used as a service account. This account will be used to run service to run Vim Service Provider Console Management Agent on Vim Cloud Connect Server. So in my case, I'll use a different account as well, just for security reasons. So as you can see, we added the server, the site, no description, connection account that will be used as a deployer service and the service account that will be used to run this management agent and click finish. After that, the deployment will be triggered and initiated from Service Provider Console. The connection will be established to Vim Cloud Connect Server, and in a few minutes, we'll be able to see that the installation is completed successfully. If you need, you can check and run through and identify what step is going on. Probably there is one more important thing that you want to check after the configuration of management agent is completed. By default, when you add Vim Cloud Connect Server, Vim Service Provider Console restricts performing any management operations from Vim Backend Replication Console on the server. These operations include managing tenants and subtenant accounts, configuring cloud repositories and replication resources. You can change this setting later in Vim Service Provider Console UI. So let's go back to our Vim Service Provider Console web UI, back to our Getting Started guide. We can check that this checkbox is ticked right now, so we can go to the next step to configure notifications. Notification configuration is relatively simple and straightforward process. However, let's recap a few important steps. First of all, we have to configure SMTP server to be able to send it. In my case, I'll just use smtp.tech.hub.local and default sender email address in service provider console at techhub.local. If we want to use secure connection or request required authentication, it's not required in my case, so we'll just like configure it as it is. And save changes. Next thing that you have to configure in notifications is just like to specify the level of notifications you want to use. You can deep dive about all these configurations later in the user guide, but the high level thing is if you want to receive notifications only once in 24 hours, you have to go to summary emails only one in 24 hours yeah if you want to have their notifications on each and every event when it's happening you're going to the highest level emails on each and every event so for me i'll stop on the summary emails just to get one in 24 hours and save it when it's done you can go back to the getting started guide to check the status and it's green right now okay so the back end of our beam service provider console is successfully configured however before start working with Service Provider Console, we have to fill in company profile, company details. So let's go for it. Go to the step four. I have to specify the company name. Let's say IT services it will be a good one. Tax ID, country where we are located. I'm based in Romania right now, so I'll add this one here. Please keep in mind that it's extremely important to fill your company profile details. All this information will be used and displayed in invoices, backup reports, and email notifications, including what will be sent to your customers. Only after the entire profile will be filled and saved, 
you will have the green checkbox in provide your company contact information step. The last step in configuration for today will be brand your portal. You can customize the appearance of Veeam Service Provider console portal, invoices, backup reports and email notifications in accordance with your company branding. And that's extremely important. So let's just go through it. Change the color schema to a different one and you will be able to see that like the head of their site will, was changed. Change the portal logo, the one that's in the header, change to our own. Report logo that used in generated reports and email notifications. So we've got our own and website icon. Get it according to the, our corporate style as well. So as you can see, everything been changed. Our portal is brand according to our own company style. After this step will be completed, you'll be able to see another checkbox in Getting Started Guide. At this moment, you successfully completed the initial configuration of Beam Service Provider Console and ready to create the first tenant. Thank you for your time and see you in next video.